Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Huang. I'm from the AI team of Samsung. So I'll be talking to you about some of the... We're taking Bixby, and we're taking Bixby to many different countries and many different devices. So this is very exciting for us to be able to share some of this with you. Okay, so this we'll be talking about with Bixby. We are Bixby everywhere. It's a bold statement, but I'll explain a bit more about this. And some of the things that we have to do in order to take a Bixby capsule that's mostly created on a mobile device and take it to different devices and different languages. And a small demo. So Bixby will be everywhere. Now, when I was actually preparing these documents, and I was really trying to encourage you guys to, you know, to prepare for Bixby being everywhere, but I think it's kind of become redundant. So if you participated in the keynote, or if you go to any of the booths, you can see all of the Samsung devices starting to incorporate Bixby. And the all-new Bixby has been introduced with the Note 9 device a couple of months ago. And you've already seen the sneak peek into the Galaxy Home device. And we had a session yesterday on how the new Bixby is making its way into our smart TV devices. But of course, it's more than just these devices. It's practically all the devices that Samsung is building that's going to have Bixby. So a lot of the devices you see here, they already have the first iteration of Bixby. And we're working hard to make them all into the new Bixby so that capsules, your capsules, can reside in not only phones and speakers, but on all of these devices for, for, for the users. And we have the Maserati outside. So we already had a kind of an attempt at creating a digital cockpit with Bixby enabled. So once we have the new Bixby integrated into that, you really will be able to take your capsule just about anywhere with you. All right, and for countries, languages, We've already launched Bixby in Note 9 globally, but that's in English. So for Korea, China, and US, we have languages localized. But for other countries, like UK, France, Europe, that's coming very soon. For languages, we have English, Korean, and Mandarin Chinese. And we're going to be expanding to other languages as well. And the importance of this part is that once Samsung localized, provides these language support, we will be doing the harder work of getting the ASR, the part converting speech into text, and TTS, converting text back to speech. When Samsung takes care of that, then the work on in between, the capsules where you are able to provide your content to each country localized in that language, that becomes much easier. So we'll be doing a lot of work on the ASR and TTS side so that you can have a great experience in all these different languages. All right, so let's take Bixby to the stars. So you've, you've, you've been hearing about the space resort sample uh, capsule from our colleagues from Sarah and Siamek just previously. And we took it all over the place. We took it to Saturn and Jupiter. But it hasn't actually been brought to all the places on Earth. It's only built in English, and it's only built for a mobile device, the Note 9. So let's see. Let's see what we can do to take this to different languages and maybe some other type of devices. Right. So this is a very brief recap on the capsule, but I think Siamek did a great job of it. So let me just go on to the next portion. So we'll be doing these three type of things. We'll be making some changes to the language aspect, talking about the UI, and doing some work on enabling a different type of the interaction. We will be or thinking about how to improve your capsule to work in a hands-free and eyes-free environment. Okay, so let's start with languages. I'll be showing you a lot of this on the, the Bixby Studio itself, but let me just go briefly over what we'll be doing together. So we'll, take, we'll start with the capsule configuration file, capsule.bxb. Right now, it only has the mobile ENUS locale built. So we'll be adding this target. Bixby Mobile, KOKR. It's hard enough talking to you in English when I'm not a native English speaker, but I'm going to be talking to you in English about Korean. Okay. So we'll be adding this kind of target to the configuration. And this is what the, the simulator looks like. And there are different aspects of this, the interaction with the user. So we'll take the dialogue and layout and modify some of the strings there into, uh, in this case, Korean. 
And right now, everything's built for the for US. We'll create, we'll separate this out to different folders. We'll see if we can isolate files that we can st keep common in the, into the base folder, and create language-specific one items into the ENUS and KOKR folders. Okay, if we do it this way, then it becomes a lot easier when you want to take it to a different language. You can just localize the files that's in the ENUS or KOKR folders. So, so this is how we would split up a, a file. If we have a resource in the EN folder with English text, we would have a similar type in the Korean folder as well. But even this case, it's kind of hard-coded into this dialogue. So what we want to do is actually split the dialogue itself into the base folder and just create a couple of string files so that everything that's in the actual the EN, the resource EN or resource KOKR files are just the, the template macros, the ones that it's easier. It's basically work of translating those strings. So we'll do that very briefly together. And finally, the NL training part. So everything previously, shown previously, the dialogues, the layouts, everything that you show the users, most of it can be translated from one language to another. But I wanted to emphasize for the NL training part, this is the part where we really shouldn't be doing translation. We should be actually migrating. So if we have a goal in one language, say, find space resorts, there might be three ways of making a natural utterance to get that goal. But in another language, you might actually have five ways of speaking it naturally. So you don't want to be translating three utterance styles from English to a different language. You actually want to create new sets of training data that the typical user would actually use. So this is a part I kind of wanted to emphasize. So this is one of the reasons why in some of the documentation within a capsule, I would highly recommend that we identify which goals this capsule is supposed to support. So the person who is working on the localization would know to be able to translate not just the wording, but the intent, the meaning. OK, so let's see if I can do all of this on the simulator. Okay, let me open the capsule. Okay, so let's take, a, let, let's take a brief look. I think you've seen this example often enough, but we have some code. This is basically JavaScript for the logic. We have the models, actions, and concepts. The concepts, the things that we want to do, actions, the things we want to do to those things, we have resources. Here we only have the EN folder, the capsule configuration. So let's start by adding the additional target. And thanks to the autocomplete, it's easy to add you know, different uh, keys. So let me start by adding KOKR here. And if you were in the previous session, it's kind of interesting how you already went through the advanced topic, and now you're coming to a more easier topic. So in the resources, let's create two folders. Let's create a base, and let's create a KOKR. Now let's take a look at the EN resources. Right now, everything is bunched up together in EN. So we want to take some of the resources that we can put in the common base and just do the language-specific parts. So right now, some of the layouts have the strings embedded. I, what I want to do is take out those embedded strings and keep those in the EN and KOKR folder, but move the common ones to the base. So I just take the whole thing, layouts, and rename the whole thing to base. It's in right now in, in the EN folder. So move it to, rename it to base. So now everything is in the base folder. There's actually one more file that I have to move from EN to base. It's the endpoints file. This is the file for mapping the action. In this case, find space resorts to the right JavaScript. So let me just move this one to the base as well. Now let's check to show, make sure that everything is actually working fine in this way. So we have the training data. It's, not in, it's in an unlearned state. So let's compile, make it learn. It's compiling. 
is compiled, it's all learned. Let's take one, find space resorts and use this one to launch the simulator. Okay, find space resorts. You can see everything is working as it used to. Okay, so we can come back to this one. Now, so now let's go to the actual layout and start the localization. Let me find the base. We've moved all the strings, all the layout to the base, space resorts, and we'll be looking at the results view, result view. So let me take a moment to describe this result view with you. So here we have three sections. The first on top, we have the message section, the render area, and the conversation drivers. So if you go back to the simulator, so this top part is the message area. This is the dialogue, the conversation I'm having with the user. The middle area is the content area, which was called render area. And in the bottom, this is where we can offer some actions like conversation driver. In this summary or this list view, I don't have a specific conversation driver. But if I were to um, dive in to details, for this particular resort, I would actually want to make a reservation. So this is a hint that you can either press the button or actually say make reservation and continue the conversation to get to the final goal that you want. So this is the conversation driver. And this is, if we are only showing one item, then we are making this a make reservation as a conversation driver. But in the case of list, you know, we don't need that right now. So coming back to the message area, here we can see that it's, the string here is hard-coded, template, and I found these uh, concepts. So let's change this. So instead, we'll create a template macro. And let me just call this, I found these. You can call it what we want. Again, I'll use control space to, uh, to auto-complete. So it's easy to do these things. I'll we'll call this space resort. Ooh, where, where am I? Something is, this is not something that I've expected. Believe me, I'm pressing escape with all my might. Space resort. Here, let me just pass along the, it's current, here it's called result. So we can pass that along, make sure. Right, now I've, I've created the macro, but there's a, this I found, I've, this, I've not actually defined this macro. I found these. So let's go and see where, can I, where I can define this macro. In the en folder, in dialogs, let's go create a dialog file, let's call it strings. It provides a default template, but I don't need this one. It, I'm creating a template macro. So I named it, what did I name it? I found these. Again, auto suggest. So I need to fill in params and content. Start with params. Param. Is we named it space resort. And for this, I need to specify what the type is. It's a space resort type. And we have to specify the cardinality. So this one is, I need to pass along one item. And just, just one item. So min required, max one. And I had to specify, I think it was a, the params, the content. And for the content, I just grabbed it from the original file. It was, I found these. Okay. Okay, I can uncomment this. Here it's not called result, it's called Space resort. Control backslash to 
get the auto indentation. Okay, so that should do it. Now if we go back to the result view, let's see. Uh, I have an error here. So let's see that. Okay, so I messed, I messed up with the, the braces. So, so it, uh, okay. Now, while I already defined the macro for this, I found these, it's still giving an error. That's because I created this one in the EN resource folder, but not in the KOKR folder. So I have to go here and also create the dialogues. So create a dialog here. I'll put it in the dialogues folder. I name it strings. And I copy over the same content I had previously, except I have to turn it into Korean. So I will erase this part and change it to Chadasmida, Korean. All right. Okay. So there is one more thing that actually there's one more file I have to translate because right now it's uh, supporting. There's a singular versus uh, plural. So there's another dialog that we've had to localize. But to save time, I just did that, but and I just copied that over, and. Let's see. Now, before we can test, we can see that the English version has the training, but Korean doesn't. So we have to create a set of training. We'll create it in Korean language. Find, name it training. That's fine. And in the training tab, we'll add Korean training. Space resort. Chazajo. Find space resort. We'll add this training. The goal of this training is the same. Find space resorts and can compile. Save, compile, and run. Okay. And you can see that it's showing space resort Chadasmida in Korean. So this way we're able to localize and just, this is just one example of localizing a string, but we should take care to localize all the different, the content area, the render area, and if you had a conversation driver as well. So we would use the same mechanism to, uh, to get this done. All right, so that's, that was the easy part. Next, let's go on to the UI section. Here, I'm not going to be showing you much code, but I'm going to be introducing the, the fact that we are going to be working with a lot of different devices with different screen sizes, and actually some devices even without a screen. But for many devices that do have screens and with different aspect ratios, by using the Bixby views, which are common UI components, and these will be built so that it's optimized for each screen. So by using these views, we'll be able to handle the, all the differences of the, the UI, the device itself. So this is an example of how one image card component would show on all these types of different devices. And we have many more views we can use in creating our capsules. We have a map tile, image cards with different sizes, different labels, different titles. We have lists, list items. You can fill it with different types of information. So we can using all of these different, and there's more. Using these different Bixby views, we can create uh, any type of uh, the screen that we need. And let's take a, a brief look at the example of a code. Here we have a list. It's a list of image cards. And an image card is an example of a view. It has a URL for the image, background image. It has a text area for the title. It's called slot one, and there could be a slot two that has a second line. So different views would have different slots that you can fill in and just use it just like that. Okay, in the next section. So, like I said, not all devices will have screens, but even on a phone, even on a device that does have a screen, there will be cases where you're not able to touch the device. So if you're driving or if you're in the kitchen working on something, 
or if, you are, if there are cases where you cannot look at the device. The phone might be in your pocket and you're connected with Bluetooth or you're driving, so you don't want to look at the phone. So in those cases, we want to be able to take a Bixby capsule, which so far has been built for a, an experience where you are able to touch and you're able to see everything, and we want to take that experience to a different kind of a, a limit, limited environment. So for hands-free, eyes-free mode, let's see what the platform and the tools provide. So before going um, digging in, let's take a look at what the non-hands-eyes-free mode looks like, normal mode. We usually start in a listening state, say something like find space resorts near Saturn. We got a result, a list of results, what we call the summary, and it showed multiple items. The user can say, choose one or tap one item and get into the details, and you get a whole lot more information and maybe conversation driver to uh, carry on the conversation. So in hands-eyes free mode, what changes is that when from the listening mode, when we make a choice, we move to the result, we typically show just one item. Instead of showing you too many things, it's very possible that you might not be able to look at the screen. So we not only show you just one item, but we also give a more descriptive t uh, speech text of what the item is. So we give you speech feedback. And at the same time, we turn on the mic so that the user can make the next selection without having to necessarily press the button or touch the screen. So when the mic is enabled, you can make a choice. You can say yes, and then dig into the, the details view. Or when the mic is turned on, you could say next or previous and move to the other items of the list. So the originally the linear list, the infinite scroll list, has been converted to a, a navig navigatable uh, uh, pages. So in each page can have you can choose to define how many items you want, but in this example, I chose just one item. And you can do, okay, a cancel, and cancel the interaction as well. So creating this hands eyes free mode, it's, we're going to reuse most of the code. We're not going to be changing any of the actions or our concepts, but we'll be adding a bit more descriptive dialogues so that we can give the audible feedback to the user, as well as adding some, some code for helping with the page navigation. So here's an example of how to add some descriptive dialogues. We have available a variable called hands-free. So within the code, if hands-free is enabled, then we can choose to uh, offer a different template macro, which has the more descriptive text. For the page navigation, by using this navigation mode, we're able to convert this list into this page view. And for each page, in this case, has just one item. And from each page, you can navigate back and forth among pages. You can make selections. And all of that is possible through this navigation mode. And one, item, one more item you can see here is that here it reads, I found 16 space resorts. Do you want this one? So the conversation has changed. Where previously, we were, we were just saying, I found these space resorts. And the user could take a look at the screen and make a choice himself. Here, we're giving you more feedback so that it's easier to kind of make a choice just based on what you hear, as well as the screen's there, so you can always see this as well. And finally, for the navigation, among the page navigation, is we have support for commands like next, more, next item, so that you can use that to traverse amongst the pages, but we want to be more con contextual. So you want to say next resort or next hotel, for instance. So it's possible to customize these kind of strings as well. And so let's see how that works. All right, coming back to the results view. So we talked about the message area. We talked about the render area and the conversation driver section. Since we're going to be changing the list, the content into the page view, we'll be working in the render area. And we'll, we'll do this when the item list count is more than one. So that's when we have a list. So we are going to be using the, the flag if hands free, else. So for the else part, it's the same as when it's not the original implementation. So we'll take this and put it in the else. And 
and concentrate on if hands-free is enabled. So it's still going to be a list of result, except now that's what's offered. We have here navigation mode. So navigation mode, and for navigation mode, we have Navigation mode, there are different options, but we'll start with read one. And when we're in read one, we have these keys. So let's, let's add these guys before I explain a bit more what they are. Right, so I've added five keys. So let me just copy over the files that I've already prepared in advance. Fast forward. So this is the strings that you, you can see. When we are navigating amongst these pages, if I'm on the first item and I say previous, then we need to be able to tell you that, no, this is, there is no previous item. Or if I'm on the last item and I say next, then I have to say, this is the last item. So we provide ways for the developer to provide all the different strings for those kind of situations. And you can see here that pre, unlike the, the normal mode, there is this summary. I found 16 space resorts. So that is part of this list summary. And this summary is provided only for the first time. For the first page, this is relevant. But when you move over to the second page, you don't want to hear, I found 16 resorts again. So this is what the list summary does. And there's a question. Do you want this one? So that's the item selection question. So we are able to fill more information, provide more information to the user this way. Okay, so I've, I've done all of that, and I've defined for each page how the item should look. We're using the same uh, type of items we previously defined. So let's see how this all looks. Okay, it's... Find... Resource. And it looks the same as before, because I have not turned on the hands-eyes free mode. So if I toggle this button here, now hands-free mode is enabled. So run the same command again, and you can see that the screen has changed. So I found 16 space resorts. Do you want this one? Let's try the navigation. Next. OK, if we say yes, no, yay. Then we can uh, select that item. And here we can see now see the uh, conversation driver as well. Right, so let's, let's take a uh, look at the something else I wanted to show you here. So let's go back to find space resorts. Let's look, take a look at the debug console. Okay, so we can see that we found the space resorts, found 16 of them. And let's take a look at the dialog here. Okay. You can see that there is this area here. Find space resorts. This is the text. This, so this is what you saw on screen. But at the same time, there is this area here, it's the speech. So this is what was read back to the user. So you can tell that uh, finding space resorts was shown on screen if it were in a normal mode, but in the same string was also shown here. But you can see that for this, I found 16 space resorts. For the speech part, we have added more descriptions. So this part is done by the, the navigation mode. It provides ways for you to provide more information. You saw how we added those five keys. So we are able to provide more audible feedback to the user this way. Okay. So one more thing I want to show you here is customizing the, the navigation uh, the commands. So we had, let's go create a, another file here for this one. 
EL navigation so this one is navigation support match this with space sort and for navigation commands so we can override or add more uh, uh, variations for say next and the response so we want to say next resort so something like this then let's see how that works so let me come back here find space resorts and if I say next resort you can see that now that this does work Right. So we've let, looked at uh, some ways of localizing the strings, the text. We've seen how by using the views, we can make the experience transferable over different devices. And we've seen some platform features to do turn your Bixby capsule into a more uh, pleasing experience for hands-free, eyes-free, right? these components. And we have a small demo. So it's interesting how the, the things that we've done for the Bixby capsule right now makes it also, it takes this experience very seamlessly to the speaker experience. So we should be able to, it's the same capsule, and we should be able to have a very seamless experience on the speaker as well. So hi Bixby, find space resorts. I need an item to continue. Oh, let me try one more time. Hi, Bixby. I need an item to continue. Find space resorts. I found 16 space resorts. The Mercurial is a hot destination and located near Mercury. Do you want this one? Uh, no. Venus Space Spa is a romantic resort with fiery views and located near Venus. Do you want this one? Cannot connect to internet. Please check the network settings. Hi, Bixby. Find space hotels. Cannot connect to internet. Please check the network settings. OK. So I prepared for many contingencies, but not this one. So I, I, think, I think the demonstration part of it has to stop here. Spotify needs to register or log in in mobile plug-in. Yeah. So when the session is over, I'd be happy to give you a demonstration. All right. So, so these are some of the things that, that's coming. The hands-free, eyes-free things that I've shown you is kind of a sneak peek into what's coming. We have, there's more coming, and the things that I've shown you is just a, a, sample, a fragment of things that you can use to create these experiences. And other things like payment, on-device testing, and additional devices it will be coming as well. And a marketplace to be able to actually launch your capsules. That's all coming in the near future. And they will be all part of the Bixby Studio updates. Right? So we have one more session left, and that's at uh, 3 o'clock. And so that's the final page. All right. So I'm, I'm cutting it a little bit short, but thanks to the demo. But, um, so that's what I have for you. Thank you.